Welcome, I'm Andrea Clessy for Woman's Hospital. Did you know that your genetics and lifestyle can both affect your risk of developing gestational diabetes? Dr. Karen Elkind-Hirsch explains. My name is Karen Elkind-Hirsch and I'm the Scientific Director of Research at the Women's Health Research Institute at Women's Hospital. Basically, gestational diabetes is defined as carbohydrate intolerance that is first recognized or diagnosed during pregnancy. So basically, it's diabetes that first surfaces during a woman's pregnancy. And the thing is that that woman may have had diabetes before she got pregnant, but commonly we don't test young women routinely for diabetes unless there's some, some symptoms of it like um, extreme thirst and extreme urination and weight loss. And so what's unique about pregnancy now is that every woman who is pregnant around 24 to 28 weeks of pregnancy is given a what we call a glucose tolerance test to look for diabetes in pregnancy because pregnancy is a state that basically makes us somewhat intolerant to our own, our own insulin and therefore if somebody has a problem, it will show up much more readily during pregnancy. So the, the biggest question is who's at risk because one of the things we do at Women's Hospital and pretty much throughout the U.S. now is we do what's called universal screening and that means everybody gets the test. And the reason we started doing that is while we know there are people who are high risk for gestational diabetes, um, it turns out that we can't always predict it. And some of the people that we would think that are not at risk um, wind up having it. So we started what's called universal screening. But if you are somewhere where they're, let's say they do, do, don't do universal screening, probably the biggest things that put you at risk are um, a family history of type two diabetes. Secondly is certain ethnic groups, African-Americans, Hispanics, have a much higher incidence, so that's a group. Um, your body weight, any female that is extremely overweight, obese, is again um, at risk for diabetes. And then probably one of the most predictive things is if you had gestational diabetes in a previous pregnancy. So that would be another group that we would test. So how do we treat these women? And pretty much if you think about gestational diabetes, it is basically um, diabetes during the type 2 diabetes during the pregnancy so the first thing that you institute is diet um, foods that raise your blood sugar are ones that we're going to have to avoid so women basically see a dietitian they're counseled on what foods to eat um, which foods raise their blood sugar how many calories they need to take in and so we try that first and what happens is most women are just like in a regular diabetic are sent home with a glucose monitor. They learn how to test their blood sugar you know, by pricking their finger. And there, there are certain guidelines we look at. We look at what does your blood sugar look, what is it at when you don't have any food on board? What does it look like an hour or two hours after you eat? And there's certain guidelines as to how high we want it to be. If diet alone doesn't fix that blood sugar and it's still staying up there too high for what we, we like it to be. There are some oral medications we use. Uh, one is called Glyburide, the other one is called Metformin. These are safe in pregnancy. Um, so we use these drugs to help, again, keep that blood sugar normal. If those are not efficacious, we then actually put the woman on insulin injections. and. We give, she learns how to take insulin just the way a diabetic would, at least during the pregnancy. One of the big questions is, how do I know if I have gestational diabetes? And that's probably the biggest problem because to be honest with you, none of us, unless our blood sugar gets so high, which you know would have to go on for long periods of time, um, we totally have no knowledge that our blood sugar's high. Um, there's, there's really no great symptom. The type of symptoms you think about diabetes, which are the type that type one has, is where they have excessive thirst and excessive urination, don't really show in a type two diabetic because it's not that complete loss of insulin, it's just their insulin doesn't make their sugar be normal. So unless we do some type of a test, 
we don't know that they have diabetes. You don't know they have diabetes, so you're not going to be symptomatic, which is why we test everybody. Um, now, the big question, which was sort of the old school, was we always thought about gestational diabetes as diabetes and pregnancy that goes away. And the thing is that we know now is that while the sugar intolerance may go away, and it doesn't go away in everybody, there are some women after they deliver their baby who still have diabetes. They may have had it before, but we didn't know. And for some, being pregnant is such a stress on the system that the diabetes, um, they wind up with full-blown diabetes. Um, but for most people, majority of women, what we call the carbohydrate intolerance, that is their sugar levels return to normal. But we know from testing them, and this is some research that we've been doing here, is that in fact, they, have, they do have a metabolic problem. That is, it isn't normal for you to develop diabetes during your pregnancy. It means that your system can't handle this challenge. And I, I say pregnancy is the best lab test I have to know if you're at risk for developing diabetes later in life. So it is making these women at a young age, and that's great because we can at least intervene, aware of the fact that if they have a large metabolic stress on their body, that they're gonna develop type two diabetes. And, and it, large stress may be not losing that weight that, that they've gained, um, eating wrong, um, not being active, all of those things are, are things that help people develop diabetes. As we get older, we become more and more intolerant to glucose. All of us have a harder time metabolizing sugar just because we're getting older, which is why used to be diabetes used to show up 40s and 50s and 60s. The problem now is because we have such a large obesity epidemic, it's showing up earlier. And that's why we've begun to realize how connected these two things are. So what is my advice for somebody who's had gestational diabetes? I think most importantly, you have to realize you are at risk. And that means you need to be monitored, whether it be annually, um, first thing is go get, if you've never had an oral glucose tolerance test since you've been pregnant, you need to go get one. Unfortunately, most people, your fasting blood sugar will be fine. It is until we stress that system do we realize there's a problem. But for anybody, even if it was 10 years ago, um, you really need to be tested. And depending on what you look like, it may be more frequently than once a year. It may be every five years. If you eat right, exercise, keep your weight down, you probably won't have to come that frequently. We really don't know how often we have to monitor people. That's one of the things we're, we're beginning to try and figure out now. But it, it certainly isn't bad to be monitored more frequently than it is to not be monitored at all. For more information, visit womans.org. Womans, exceptional care centered on you.